again, I mentioned the great coaches that were on campus while you're there, Andy, of Steve Spurrier, Ray Tanner, Don Staley, Frank Martin. Talk about your most memorable interactions with those coaches. Again, I know you're doing the play-by-play -play thing, but of course you do pregame, postgame interviews with these guys. And I know you weren't necessarily on the play-by-play -play for football, but I'm sure you rubbed shoulders with Steve Spurrier more than once. But again, it was exciting time for South Carolina and with these great coaches, great players, great teams. Just talk about some of your favorite memories from the coaches specifically and your interactions with them. Well, I, I always tell people Steve Spurrier was the exact same guy ambling down the hallways at williams Bryce as he was at the podium at press conferences. Mm -hmm. So he was a, just a really genuine guy. Uh, always enjoyed my interactions with him. Uh, with Frank, you know, Frank, uh, when that whistle blows and he steps across the line, he is as easygoing and warm a guy as you could hope to be. And uh, I still stay in touch with Frank every now and again. We'll shoot texts to each other. Uh, just a, a really solid human being and a solid citizen and, and always enjoyed talking with him, uh, you know, doing our Carolina calls where you can just sit and pick his brain for, for 60 minutes. And, uh, you know, boy, whenever he, he chooses to write a biography about his life or, or somebody else writes it or he writes his own autobiography, uh, some of the stories that he can tell about uh, just fr from his beginnings to, to the peaks that he reached at South Carolina, uh, it, it is worthy of a book. And then, you know, uh, with Ray and then Chad after him, always very generous with their time. And, you know, what I appreciated about uh, all the coaches that I've worked with, uh, and you don't get this everywhere, they understood kind of what I was about uh, as a broadcaster. And I, I think they understood that I was wanting always to paint their program and their student athletes in the best possible light. And you don't always get that trust from coaches. And so that they were extending their trust to me and were able to, to share, you know, little nuances and, and details that they might not have otherwise wanted to, to give up. Um, I always appreciated that because it helped make my job uh, a, a lot better in, in what I could convey and, and the information that I could share. So um, without their cooperation, I don't think our broadcast would have had quite the same, quite the same feel to them. So uh, with all those guys, I have nothing but warm memories of, of dealing with them. Andy, you speak on Frank and the basketball program. I've got to ask you, because again, you, you went to Georgia tech in 2016 um, and obviously that 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 has that decision has paid off well for you. The voice of the Yellow Jackets are doing a great job with them. But did you ever spring of 2017 where you're like, darn, I, I just missed that final four run? I just missed it. Yeah, I, I should in addition to those other awards you had mentioned, I think I have the great timing award somewhere here <laughs> up. Yeah, for, for leaving South Carolina. But I, I'll say this. I was so thrilled for Frank and his coaches and those players. I was so thrilled for Derek and Casey that they had the chance to, to call that run. Um, and, and I was watching every single game of that NCAA tournament. And, boy, I was so fired up for them, knowing where he had taken the program and, and the heights to which they had reached. Um, and, and even then at, at Georgia Tech, um, you know, that year we had made the NIT championship game. And people might scoff about that. Mm -hmm. But at Georgia Tech that year, my first year here, they were picked preseason 14th in the ACC. Uh, one of the National College basketball writers predicted, predicted that South Carolina, that Georgia Tech would not win a single conference game. Uh, so we not only defy those expectations, but we get to the NIT and then go on a really inspiring run of our own. Um, and that was a really likable team. And we're able to spend a week in New York at the NIT. It's funny. We check in to the exact same hotel where South Carolina was staying for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. They had the decals for the NCAA tournament on the elevator doors. And I remember as we're checking in, they're just leaving. Um, and I see some of the people that I remembered uh, meeting in South Carolina, you know, like in the lobby of the hotel. So I'm thinking, well, this is kind of odd. <laughs> uh, but no, it was that was an awesome run. And, and uh, to, to know where, you know, the state of the program and Frank had taken it over to where he had taken it in 2017, that was awesome. And, uh, you know, there might have been a few tinges of envy for uh, for Derek, but uh, any of those feelings were, were overshadowed by uh, just feelings of elation for all the people involved with the program.